Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday, episode 52. Happy New Year. OMG, can you believe it's 2022? I thought we'd be flying cars by now. I mean, what's up, right? That's what this program is all about. We bring you new, fresh ideas, whether you're an RVer, wannabe, part-time, maybe even a crazy full-time like me. Man, do we have an action-packed show for you tonight? We're changing up a few things, but same of the stuff remains. I am super proud that in about three minutes, we're going to bring on um, Peter and Ryan from Rover Vans. And you're going to have live Q&A with van builders. And I'm really, really excited to have them in the house tonight. So they're going to sit tight. Let me just kind of roll through what we do here. It's all about your questions answered live on YouTube and then the replay afterwards. So the, the chat, many folks are going through that right now, which is great. Um, here's our program tonight. You're going to see a couple new segments and we're going to roll through those when we get there. But this is the time points tonight. Again, we'll have our guest Rover Vans on in just a couple minutes. Um, new van received. When I get to that segment, we'll explain what that's about. Uh, tip for camper vanners. Uh, we've got that at 20 minutes past the hour. And then um, the movie and song of the week. If you're a Kevin Costner fan, you will not want to miss this. It is not Yellowstone, by the way. Season finale was on Sunday night. Don't tell me what happened. I'm still watching the <laughs> from season three. Um, Libation Live. Oh, my gosh. We have got Voodoo Ranger. Anybody had this before? It's by New Belgium out of Colorado. This is a Juicy Haze IPA, and uh, we're going to pop that open here in a little bit. And uh, another new segment, Place to Take Your Van, is what we're doing tonight. So we'll explain that along the way. Here's the Libation Live. Hopefully you have something to get your pour on with me. That would be really, really awesome. And my screen has frozen. This is just awesome. <laughs> Um, hey, who's this good looking gal? If you're having a happy day, just give this program a thumb up. If you think she's the cutest thing ever, give her a thumb up, right? Um, that's what we like to do here um, is do that. Where am I coming at you from? I'm coming at you from endless Florida, endless summer Florida. It's 73 degrees right now. It's pretty chilly other places. Winter has arrived with a vengeance. And um, and that is not going to be awesome for some people tonight. But uh um, where are you watching from? Always curious about that. If you have a new country that we're not uh, familiar with on the program, um, state your country and we'll put a, a your country map uh, flag on the map for for next week. So let me get this off screen and see if I can get this thing to settle for me. My second screen is freaking out for some reason. It is not going to. It's not going to. Stand by, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my gosh, this thing just kills me. Um, Okay, so uh, stand by, please. We got some familiar faces in the house tonight, which is great. And let me call some of those folks out, and then we'll bring on our guests here in just a minute. There we go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Technical difficulties in my own driveway. All right, so we got some familiar friends in here. We got Ron, upstate New York. Hopefully it's a winter where you're at, Ron. Mesa Mike, good to see you, sir. Um, where the cactus is always healthy, right? Here's Rich from Steenwood. Um, yeah, I'm not really missing a beautiful 11 degrees. Let me assure you, I have shorts on and flip-flops under my cowboy shirt, so underneath my... Um, here we got uh, Sharon's in the field from Ohio. Steve Priestman, my business mentor from lovely Cedar Key, Florida, where they make, they make a lot of clams, uh, which is great. Donna, uh, good to see you from Scottsdale. This is great. And uh, here's Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Steve, thanks for joining us. Jane, um, good to see you. Um, you guys are probably in lockdown mode with uh, the cold weather. Oh, my gosh, this is great. Um, so a lot of familiar faces, some new faces, too. It's just a delight to have you here. And welcome to my, my channel, Go Small, Live Large. For me, for the first time, my name is Scott. I probably should have said that first. Okay, so let me see if I get this to work. And then we will um, bring in our guests it is going to work. So if you're into van tours, places to take your van, van tips, it'd be one you'll want to um, subscribe to the channel. This Friday, 2.30 p.m. Central, um, we've got Embassy RV. Uh, they have a very special YouTube Live, and um, they are uh, announcing a big program to remodel van RV. So if you've got a van RV that you want to update, maybe cabinetry systems, lithium, things like that, don't want to do it yourself, um, they have got what they call Project Bear Cub. And you don't want to miss that uh, at all. Terry Minix is going to be here live on YouTube for us. Um, going to be at the Super Show in Tampa in a couple of weeks. Um, that is on my website. You can join us uh, for two different roundups. 
and we are doing the movie still. I don't have dates yet, but that is coming very, very soon. So live Q&A, get your questions in. And with that, I think I want to introduce our guest tonight. Um, super excited to have both of these gentlemen in the house. And this is Peter on the, with the gray jacket and then Ryan in the blue. They have their hats on because they are from Rover Vans in Chicago. They have turned the furnace on in their big van shop. And guys, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having us. You are welcome. It's just a delight to have you both. Um, Peter, we've done a couple of uh, videos with you. One was a van tour. I, came, I think it came out in the late summer. Then um, we just did a transit van accessory video. Um, and that came out just last month. And Ryan, I'm so glad you're in the house, sir. You just gave us a tour of your <laughs> van again. Such an awesome van. And that just came out uh, last Saturday. So if you haven't seen that and you're into really cool vans, um, just a delight to have you both both here. So thank you. Yeah, definitely. So maybe Peter, just um, we'll, we'll get the questions rolling in from the audience here. Uh, this is the format we like to use, which is the three um, asterisks followed by three question marks. So you'll want to um, use that to help me uh, locate your question. But Peter, tell us just a little bit about um, Rover Vans, which the initials are RV. For some reason, that just struck me like this morning. <laughs> I don't know why that took so long. But yeah. tell us about Rover Vans, your, your philosophy. You see there's a van behind you in the shop, which is awesome. And just give us a little, you know, uh, one-on-one on Rover Vans. Yeah, well, we started actually exactly a year ago. Um, Ryan joined us pretty soon after that. Um, I'll be honest with you, there's no philosophy in the beginning. I just, I, I love vans. I love van life. Um, the van that I built originally with my son, it came out really, really cool. And I thought, hey, let's build some vans. Um, there really wasn't much thought behind, you know, starting up. Um, yeah, we're in year one. We're still kind of figuring stuff out as far as where the van building will, you know, business will take us. I don't think we have kind of narrowed it down to, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're shooting for. Uh, we're just building really cool vans, meeting really cool people, and we're learning a lot. And then in addition, we're developing accessory uh, stuff, um, like like the one that we did an interview with you. Yeah, and you can see the van in the background there, ladies and gentlemen. There's a, a really awesome ladder. Um, I think what I was really impressed with uh, when we met in person in Chicago in June is you kind of come from the – the remodeling background, the, the high-end kitchens and bathrooms, and the quality of the woodwork, I was really struck by your van. So you're taking these skills in a different industry, and you're applying them to, to, to van builds. And I thought that was pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, you know, doing construction for, I guess, over 20 years now, I think, that I've been at it. That, that part of the, you know, I guess, skill or – experience definitely helps with the van business. Um, Ryan probably will tell you, um, you know, I like everything to be as, as nice as, as possible and quality is super, super important to me. Um, one of the reasons we actually partner up with Wilderness Vans is the furniture that they make for our vans. Uh, the quality is probably some of the best that I've seen in the business. Um, I was actually looking through some old photos and emails and I reached out to Wilderness a long, long time ago, and I saved them as a van builder because I just loved the quality of the furniture. So I'm happy that we, you know, have such a great partner. And I guess one of, one of the, the, the main goals is to build really, really high-end and high-quality vents uh, at Rover Vents. Yeah, no, it's, it's super great you mentioned that. Um, so Travel Dreamer's got a question here. Keep, get those questions uh, coming in. I've got some uh, good ones here lined up. So Travel Dreamers, um, do you build out minivans? I have a follow-up question to that. So minivans? So, minivans, not yet. We do have a kit for a Nissan NV, I think it's an NV2000, or a Ford Transit Connect. Um we actually we have a client that's um they're still waiting on their van uh maybe a few months from now so we haven't had one that we built but we're we will build one 
Yeah. Um, and the follow question I have for you is, um, are you in the chassis business or is this a BYOV, bring your own van? Um, you know, in this market, we're doing a little bit of both. Um, we recently acquired three sprinters and capital transits just to when clients come lately to us, uh, the biggest challenge is actually finding a van. Um, the used van market is ridiculous. Even the new market, you know, you walk into a dealership and they're asking crazy, crazy pricing. Um, there's also been a big delay in van production. Amazon took a lot of vans. So we invested a little bit to be ready for clients that come in and don't have a van. But um, probably 50-50 of our clients, when they come in, they they own a van. Um, so we're, we're doing both. You can do a BI OB or we can provide a van for you. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Whatever the customer wants. Um, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Let me ask you about, um, you would mentioned Sprinter um, and, and Transit. That, that's a Transit behind you, it looks like, right? Um, and, and Pro Masters. Are you kind of building on all three and you know, expanding into some other ones? Uh, the Nissan, I think you mentioned. Um, do you have, preference is the wrong word, but are you building across all three uh, primary chassis? Builds. Yeah, so we, we've done a bunch of transits. Um, we're working on two sprinters right now. We haven't done a ProMaster, but we have one sitting in the parking lot. And I think that's going to come up in April when we start that build. Um, so we're looking forward to learning a new chassis. Um, but so far, these three have been kind of, you know, I think like most gun builders, those are the three main ones that we work on. Yeah, it's it's just so cool. Um, and I love talking with craft builders like yourselves because it's a very different approach. Um, I, was, well, I was kind of curious about philosophy. It's not about how many vans can we get out the door. Think of the big guys, right? Thor and Winnebago. Um, but you're more of a custom crafter, um, really kind of listen to what the customer needs. And, and um, do you have a established floor plans? And maybe I'll bring up a, an image here for us to look at. Um, it was on your website. I noticed there's um, kind of three different floor plans, I'll call them, the 001, the 007, and the 021. Um, or do customers say, those are cool, but I want to make some modifications? What's your, what's your thinking on that? Sure. So first, we have two lines of vans. The ones that are on the website, uh, all the furniture has been built by Wilderness Vans, and they have about a dozen different floor plans that you can choose from. Um, with us, if one of these plans isn't 100% to your liking, you can actually still modify it a little bit. Um, but that's one line. And then the second part, um, we can design something from scratch for, you know, for you. Um, like I, myself, you know, I have three kids and I do a lot of different sports. Uh, so we build the van around that, you know? Um, so depending on the client, depending on the needs and wants, we can make that custom van, or you can choose one of the layouts that we have, uh, already ready and then wilderness is already designed for us that's super helpful um because people probably come up with all kinds of ideas so how do you make it feasible right <laughs> yeah um let's see so i uh, got a few questions here so jk house wants to know do you have a jetpack um do you have a plug 100 percent of the time does the unit heat up and battery expand due to overcharging so i'll ask you guys how ryan in particular if you're doing you know van life for a few weeks um, what what um, Jake House is referring to is my jetpack here, and um, I did kind of melt one down by having it plugged in all the time. So what you're referring to here is uh, when I have it charged, I unplug it, and then I basically run it all the way down to about zero, then I plug it in, charge it up, and unplug it again. So what you're referring to is the battery in the back here, and mine had gotten so swollen, the fact that it did not catch fire is really a miracle. I think the guardian angels were super looking out because I couldn't even close this thing. I actually had it taped. So yeah, yeah don't do what I did. Um, and this is my, my little lifeline. Um, it just is so bulletproof in 95% of the cases. Um, Ryan, what do you do for, for, um, you know, internet connectivity when you're on the road and, and Peter, what are your customers talking about? Uh, Cause this is still one of the biggest headaches I have um, now f nearly three years into full-time van life. Yeah, we haven't yet used a uh, jetpack yet in a build. Uh, I haven't used one personally uh, in my van. I just used one, um, you know, working working in a, a previous job. Uh, we had spotty internet connection, so I, I used one there, and it worked fine. 
Um, but in my van, I've just got a WeBoost uh, cell signal booster. Um, and my experience with it has been pretty much what everybody else has said their experience with WeBoost is, is if, if you have a little bit of signal, it will indeed boost your cell signal. Um, but if you have no signal whatsoever, you're not getting any, it's not going to create a signal. Um, so that's just been my experience so far. Um, but, but, you know, 90% of the time, uh, it does work. And I do notice, uh, you know, a, a significant difference, um, in cell signal. Yeah, that's, uh, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, I noticed we have, uh, Ginger walkabout in the house, ladies and gentlemen. How about that? <laughs> she had a wee boost, um, kind of mixed results. Uh, Ginger, good to see you. Um, welcome back from Spain. Um, a question here from Dave uh, for Peter and um, Ryan. Where in Illinois are you located? That's an easy one. Yeah, we're in Glenview, Glenview, Illinois. <laughs> Glenview. Yeah, so, so it's just, a Chicago land just, suburb, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and their uh, uh, kind of incognito shop, which is kind of cool. Uh, Katmandu is saying um, uh, Nissan announced it will stop building the NV200s. That's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, really smart audience here. I don't, uh, a lot of times they know more than I do, which is um, why we do these things. We learn together, we share together, and then you all decide. Um, Jane uh, is an Illinoisan as well. They have a Travado. Uh, so on a ProMaster, um, are you, and once to know, are you working on storage gear options for the ProMaster chassis? Um, I thought you said you could be a, a, one of the guinea pigs, me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we, we're, we're definitely going to work on it. We're finishing development for the Sprinter. Um, we do have, uh, well, we obviously have our Transit. We have a second product for our Transit. Um, Sprinter is going to be out next, which will take a couple of months. So I'm hoping by summertime, we're going to have something for a ProMaster. That is so great. I just, I just love, um, looking at the van behind you. There's the ladder and the bike rack system and the storage box you kind of talked to me about. Um, it just makes me want to take Lily, the, my van up the next uh, notch and your, and your deck. Uh, tell us about the deck. What's the situation on the deck, roof deck? Um, sure. We actually kind of customized the Rhino Rack. Uh, we used two, um, two Rhino Racks together because it was a big van, and they don't make one that you can install uh, that was big enough. Um, quite a bit of work there, but it uh, worked out pretty well. And I, I like the, uh, how modular and how many things you can attach. I mean, they make a ton of products, ton of attachments. Um, like the side wheels that you can see, you know, on this one. Um, but they have like anything from, you know, a foldable WeBoost antenna holder, um, just attachments for really everything. So that's one of the reasons we went with uh, with them. But um, Over Vans is actually developing a roof rack for transits, which we're super excited about. Um, we're going to have our prototype made next week. And everything goes well. We could actually have them here as early as February. Um, so we'll probably send you some details on that as soon as we have the prototype finished. Yeah, it's it's a really a great, great point. And on, on rovervans.com, there's quite a bit of information on the, the three floor plans and the, the accessories. And again, you're kind of leaning in with Transit first, Sprinter, then ProMaster, is that what I heard? Correct, yeah. Yeah. So by the time I get back to Chicago in, in late spring, early summer, um, again, I'd be happy to be a guinea pig guy for you. Yeah. Um, that'd be really, really awesome. Um, so stay right where you, you folks are. I see some really good questions coming in, but I, I promised this in the entry uh, intro. And what I want to do is share this new segment we're going to start with uh, next week. And this is called New Van. What in the heck is this? In, in the comments, the emails, I am just getting all kinds of information about people taking delivery of their new van. And I have a special form on my website now. We're, we're going to dismiss with the email. Go to my website here, gosmalllivelarge.com forward slash woo. What's up Wednesday is what that stands for. And what we want to do is bring you on to the show for a few minutes and tell us about your story. Why did you choose the van you chose? Uh, what was your waiting time? 
what's been your overall dealer experience? And most importantly, I'm not I'm very serious about this. What was it like your first nights in your van? Um, there are so many new van parents um, that are coming out of the woodwork. And I just think it's so important to share those. This whole thing is not about me, but it's really about you. And if you've got your, your Rover van and you've spent the first night on the mountain someplace, we want to hear about it. And that's what this segment is about. So it's going to be real time on the show. We're going to start with this next week. I've reached out to a couple of you. Donna, check your email, please. <laughs> and um, we'll send you a link on the backside and you can join this if you want to share your story. So that's what New Van is about. Uh, we've talked about this many times over the last year, and we're going to try and actually make this happen. So if you want to share your story a little bit, um, go to my website, fill out the form, and then I will reach out to you separately and send you the magic link um, so you can join the show for a few minutes and just share your story. Um, I'm just kind of curious, you know, Ryan, you're in a van again. There's a whole community around the van agains, right? And the adventure yeah. vans are just a really um, active community group. When somebody gets their van, are they like, you know, they could be 45 or 55, but all of a sudden they're like 15 years old again, right? What's that experience <laughs> like with you? Yeah, I mean, I I usually uh, handle like the deliveries of our vans when they uh, are finished and they go out the door uh, with our clients for the first time, um, and it's it's really cool to see how excited people are. A lot of the times, um, our clients will come when they drop off the van, and then they won't show up again until they come to pick it up. So they'll drop off an empty cargo van that's got you know nothing in it. Uh, and then pick up a van that's fully decked out, ready to live in and go on an adventure with. Um, so it's it's pretty exciting, you know, to 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 give that to people, to experience that with people. Super helpful. Yeah, um, it's just it's just amazing. Um, <laughs> it's it's a great uh, some really great questions. Let me pop these up and. Um, not sure how to say your name. I apologize. Uh, but how do you approach designing the living experience in your vans? Do you have a designer? Maybe we're looking at the designers, huh? <laughs> um, I'm not officially the designer here. We have a really talented designer. His name is Noah. Um, and he uh, he's, he's really good at designing products um, for us. And he has done a couple of uh, interior designs for us. Um, a lot of the stuff from the wilderness line, uh, that's their designs that we use and they tweak those um, if our client wants something different. Um, but for our custom vans, um, we have we have Noah design those, but it, it, we, we all sort of uh, provide input into the design. Um, so it's not really just him single-handedly doing the design work himself. Peter has a lot of input. I have a lot of input, and you know, because we have we have such uh, so much experience, um, so it's it's it becomes a very well rounded uh, design with a bunch of different viewpoints um, from you know different the different experiences we've all we've all had. Super helpful. And here's one of their their floor plan models. This is the 007. Um, apparently, James Bond uh, bought one, right? Uh, but you can see the interior here. It's, it's very different than most vans. Um, some elements of, of familiarity with the pull, uh, the pull down bed. I mean, zoom in so you guys can see that just a little bit better. But um, they're really cool. Um, and again, the, the craftsmanship that I saw um, with the woodworking in particular is just over the top. Um, so just congratulations. It's, they're just beautiful vans. Um, here's a question you probably never get, um, Peter, um, Dave wants to know what's the average bill price if you bring a van. Sure. I think, um, for most clients, it's going to hover somewhere between 45 to 60,000, really depending on, you know, lots of different variables, like how much, you know, how many exterior toys do you want from like roof racks and lights, um, you know, wheels, uh, things like that. Um, I think the batteries, um, you know, depending on how much power you need in the van, that affects the price a little bit. But um, you, for the most part, what you see in pictures is going to be right around that fifty thousand dollar range. Super helpful. Um, what? Let's see. We got a good question here. And hey, by the way, um, if you're kind of enjoying yourself tonight, give uh, Rubber Vans a thumb up. I specifically got the black tank gloves out. Uh, so give them a black tank gloved thumb up for 
for Peter and Ryan join us tonight. Appreciate that um, a lot. And uh, here's a good question here Sherry has for you. How long does it take for you to build an average build out uh, once you have the chassis? It's a great question. Sure. So again, depending kind of on how complicated the build is and whether we're going with a with an existing layout or with, we're doing something brand new. Um, on average, once we have all the parts, so say you bring your van in and you, you uh, leave your deposit and we put in a start date for you, um, anywhere from six to eight weeks, um, depending on the van. So pretty quick. <laughs> so Ryan's working overtime apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's pretty quick. Um, so here's Ginger Walk about saying, hey, if I was uh, still doing full time, uh, she'd be on a wait list for one of these vans. Um, she's a, a brassy, sassy gal, and she had a Travato like mine that she modded out um, pretty pretty handedly. Um, um, so I promise a tip of the week, and uh, maybe, um, Ryan, if you got a van tip, um, you can share yours. But here's mine. I always like to help you be a better RVer. That's what this show is about. So my tip of the week is, what is this? Banana and duct tape. What's that got to do with anything in a van? I get asked all the time, how do I stick stuff to my walls and to the table so they don't move? And the fast answer is I use mounting putty tape. Uh, we did a video specifically on this. It's really magic. Um, my extra tip is do not get the Loctite, the blue stuff. While it kind of functions um, the same originally as the Scotch brand there, um, what I found is it dries out, and more importantly, it leaves stains um, with the blue. Uh, certainly, if there's anything fabric or something like that. So um, that's how I stick stuff to the walls and the tables. Use the mounting uh, putty tape. And um, down below off the show tonight, we'll put the, um, the video I did on this. There's actually a number of products, but this one I use probably the most. Um, Ryan, any, any uh, or even Peter for that matter, you spent time in a band. Any, any tips for folks? Um, I would something that's related to where we are right now in Chicago, where it's so cold is uh, you definitely want to winterize your van um, before it gets too cold. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about uh, any leaking pipes or fittings or connections inside your van. Um, we're having to deal with that now uh, in the last couple of weeks too, uh, with winterizing the, the vans that we have here on site that are parked outside. Um, and then another thing too is uh, to be sure to if you're if you drink out of your onboard water tank to get the non-toxic uh, winterizing fluid. Um, that way you you know you're guaranteed that you're not going to have to uh, worry about any any sort of um, you know poison or anything that's that's in some of the um, the winterizing fluid that's out there. Because some of it is meant pretty much only for gray tanks and only for black tanks, but it, you, they kind of don't really advertise it like that. Um, so it's, it's something that I found out within the, you know, the last few weeks um, as we were winterizing our vans that are here. Um, and we were sure since, since we don't, uh, we, we do removable gray tanks in our vans and we haven't done any black tanks in our vans. Um, we only really have onboard uh, freshwater tanks um is to get the non-toxic winterizing fluid so that's that's my tip that's a pretty good tip for this time of year <laughs> i guess asked often um you know tell us about winterizing and my answer to winterizing is don't get in winter weather you know i live in a van on purpose so i just go where the weather is really pretty pleasant so i've never winterized my van ever um, I did freeze it the fourth week of ownership, and that was not a pleasant experience when I was in London. But uh, yeah, that's a great tip. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very tired. Well, do, you know, they they continue doing outside sports uh, through the winter time, whether it's skiing or snowboarding. And we build four seasons vans here, so um, you know, with a lot of our clients being in the Midwest, they're they're super into the outdoor winter sports. So um, it's something that we have to let our clients know when they come pick up their van. It's a great, great point. Um, here's a question kind of for both of us. Um, I know what my answer is going to be. The question is, will you be at the Tampa show? Um, Gary's referring to the nation's first or second largest RV show. It's in Tampa, Florida, 
in a couple of weeks. It's on the January 19, I think. Um, I will be there. I'm going to be there the whole week. We've got two roundups planned, Friday the 21st, um, Saturday the 22nd, 11 p.m. at the Winnebago Travado booth. And Volta's going to join me. Um, how do you kind of do you do the over, you know, the adventure van shows, Peter? Is that something you're kind of into? It, it, it's, it's a big investment of time and money. But how do you are you going to be at Tampa? Uh, we're not going to be at Tampa. We do plan on attending a few of them. We haven't kind of put that on the calendar exactly which ones. Um, we did one uh, show in Tennessee, which was awesome. It was a great success. And we made, we met like really, really cool people. So um, the goal is definitely to attend three or more of them uh, this year. But uh, we haven't finalized which ones yet. We got to kind of figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're kind of coming back to life. Um, I'm really excited uh, for the Tampa show. Um, we'll see. Um, we'll see what the tennis is like. Um, so, uh, if you're f- not familiar, um, this is Ryan's van. Um, a small van. Um, question, Ryan: How big is the van in, in length, size, and then because of that, what's the name of your van, please? <laughs> uh, so my van is it's about 15 feet in length, uh, and its name is Bigfoot. Um, the reason being is just it's it's Bigfoot is my favorite cryptid, uh, and also it's it's painted brown. Uh, so you know it's it's kind of the the van itself is kind of a character, and Bigfoot is kind of a character. So that's why that's why it's got that name. And it's just the coolest van. And if you haven't seen this, um, I think part of the, the whole van experience is just seeing other people's vans. We're a very nosy, curious group. Um, so if you haven't seen this, um, he shares everything. And you will not believe what he's actually packed into this. Uh, it was kind of a build-it-yourself DIY uh, custom design, right, Ryan? And uh, you will be astounded at what he's put into this. So if you haven't seen this, um, please. And then when you see it, leave a comment for him and because he's checking these out because he's really into it. There's a pretty big community around the about, around the Vanigans, right? Yeah, there uh, a, a lot of them. You know, with the with the Vanigan having stopped being sold in the U.S. in 1991, uh, you know, and not really too many options between like 1991 all the way up until like five years ago, say when the adventure vans kind of exploded. Um, so a lot of people held on to their Vanigans if they had them already. Uh, but now we're seeing kind of a shift from uh, like Vanagon culture into full size adventure vans. Um, so it's it's kind of a cool continuation of uh, of the culture. And you know, I, I say it all the time that Vanagon people are the best people. Uh, but secondary to that, uh, adventure van or just van lifers in general, uh, you know, are 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 the best people. You know. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really, you know, the van's very important. We talk about it all the time, but even more important is what the van allows you to do. And that exactly. is go cool places, meet cool people, and just really live life much more fully, I think. Um, Catman Dude's got a comment here, Peter. Like, uh, like the uh, window size on the van in the back looks more commercial, like a Brinks armored car. That's kind of cool. Never thought of that before, but. Um, there is something special about these vans as I drive around and I see them that have the kind of the custom window sizes. Um, so it is a, it's a, it's a badass. I think I can see that on YouTube live. But look at vans. So I totally agree with you, Catman do. Um, Travel Dreamer's got a question here, and then we're going to do our, our movie of the week here in just a minute. So uh, Travel wants to know, what electrical system do you put into your van conversions? That's a great question. These are all great questions. Um, so we've primarily used uh, Renogy systems and their entire, like um, basically from their batteries to their inverters to their battery monitors and uh, solar panels uh, on our vans. And it's kind of a really um, easy to follow uh, architecture. And they've also got some really, really nice products um, for a little bit less expensive than what you know, you get with the Volta, um, or if you use a Victron system, um, we, we do use Victron, uh, products as well. It just really depends on what our clients, uh, what their demand is, um, out of their electrical system. Um, so, but, but, uh, you know, that's, that's primarily what, what we've been using so far. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I'm just curious. Are, 
our lithium systems? Is that, um, what's the right way to ask this? What do you see more trend toward solar or lithium or are they kind of a hybrid? Um, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of a hybrid where, uh, you know, the, the lithium is great to have because it's, it's a, it's a bigger capacity of, uh, you know, batter of battery power, uh, versus using like the old school AGM batteries, which are basically, you know, we'll never put into a build. We'll never put AGMs into a build. Um, and then having the solar is great, you know, as, as you're parked or, you know, whatever to, to continue the amount of time you're able to stay off grid. Um, so, but, you know, by, by being able to recharge your lithium batteries. Yeah. Um, and, and you don't have to have a you know massive volta system like I do to enjoy the benefits of lithium. Right. I think even in your van, um, Ryan, you had, uh, a lithium battery with some solar that topped it off. I was, and I loved, loved, loved your, um, your gauge. Uh, it was just, it was so, so ingenious. Um, yeah. So there's been a couple, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we've started installing those, uh, those same gauges, uh, into, into some of our builds. Um, it's, it, it kind of starts at a higher price point, um, because of, you know, how nice that Cy Marine system is. Um, but it's, it's it's a really nicely designed system. It's all marine grade, um, and it's 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 actually meant uh, for um, like marine applications for sailboats and yachts and stuff like that. Um, but it works really really well. Like a lot of other things, uh, the marine the marine world kind of translates over into the van world and the RV world as well. So. Um, so it, it's it's nice to have uh, all of your you know having your water level, uh, being able to determine how much solar you're getting in, how much charging is coming in from your shore power or from your alternator, um, and then you know what your usage is all in one place versus having four different gauges to tell you what all those things are. So having having and and it comes in. You know, it, it's displayed on a display that's as nice of quality as, you know, your iPhone screen is. Um, so so we've started installing those in, in vans. It's it's a way for us to, you know, kind of bring these, like, you know, a, an in this industry that's kind of been stuck in the past into, uh, you know, 2022. Um, yeah, and, and there's, I think, just an increasing expectation of having technology as part of the van. Absolutely. You know, black tanks are important, you know, some of the obvious stuff, but um, I did a, a, a survey poll of the audience, so it's been a few months ago, and you know, what innovations would you like to see in the van? And I was really, maybe surprised or not, the technology was the, the number one uh, thing that people wanted. Uh, in addition to kind of floor plan aesthetics, um, which I mm. think you guys, um, so there was a question, uh, show us, uh, the, the van tours. We're not going to do that tonight. Um, like the one behind you, cause it takes a fair amount of effort to get all the technology to work out. But, um, I apologize. I, I missed who asked that uh, question, but, um, definitely check out rovervans.com. You can see their, their, their builds right there. Um, there's a chat thing. You can get in communication with them. Um, check out the video I, uh, Peter and I did back in, um, in June when everything was green and, um, and speaking of green, um, we've got our mo a movie of the week here in just a second, but uh, a number of questions are, are coming in. Uh, are your vans four season? And what is kind of your definition? We talked about winterizing a little bit, but four seasons is kind of out of the gate. That's not anything overly special, right? You do, it's a lot of insulation too, if I remember right. Correct. We, we use a ton of insulation from insulating the floor to combining insulate and uh, half lug wool. Uh, we stop this van as much as we can. We put the stuff everywhere. Uh, in addition to it, we install robust heaters uh, for the winter. Uh, we have started using domatic um, AC systems. Uh, they're, they're 12 volts. They actually work pretty well. We just done one. We're installing two more in, uh, in the next build. Um, so I'd say, yeah, they're pretty, pretty poor season. That's so great. That's the one thing I wish my... Um my pro master had uh, it's a 2019 build out by Winnebago. The insulation is is pretty bad. <laughs> They've improved that quite a bit, but my tanks still hang out. So another reason why I'm just super sensitive on not being in winter weather. Um, 
So let's flip gears here just a bit. So we always like to talk about, um, you know, uh, again, your your favorite movie or song. And this is um, a movie. This is a projector for those of you that are a little more seasoned. <laughs> Some of the young ones. Um, this is from Gene. Thank you for um, sharing this with us. I have not seen this movie. Um, and the, what caused this to come forward was our previous discussions on on um, Yellowstone, the, the series that's a hit now on season four. And I uh, can't get enough of that. But Postman is an apocalyptic. Is that the right word um, in the U.S.? And Kevin Costner apparently saves the day. So curious if you've seen The Postman. Um, and then this is on my on my queue on Apple TV to, to rent this uh, for a few bucks. I'm kind of curious. Look how young he looks here. Uh, made to look old. Um, he's in his late 60s now, right? Uh, have you guys seen this movie? We haven't. Peter, no. right? Yeah. Are no. you following Yellowstone at all? I'm kind of curious. Uh, I am, yeah. I'm actually all caught oh, up. Yeah. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. oh, that's so great. It's just like I can't get enough. I bought and downloaded everything um, for uh, for offline enjoyment. Um, so we've got just a couple minutes. There's some great questions. Then we'll get to our libation live. Man, this hour goes so fast. I can hardly keep up. Uh, let me get here. Um, so the question is, um, so Mason Mike is wanting to know, we talked about this a little bit. Um, you mentioned roof rack for ProMaster. Um, rooftop deck, is that in the future plans? Um, maybe just tell so, us about your accessory business for in general. Whoops. And then um, ProMaster specific. So the, the, the roof rack that we're designing, um, it's going to be designed for transit. But with very little modification, we're going to make it work for a sprinter and, and the ProMaster. Um, our goal is to make something that, A, we can ship in a small package. So you're going to be able to put it together, and that's going to save um, cost on shipping tremendously. I think, you know, to ship a large roof rack, you're looking anywhere from $500 and up. I've seen sometimes even $700 to ship them. And they're very awkward to design uh, to install. Um, so the idea is to have that roof rack, um, you know, come in a flat pack and then you assemble it. And the second idea is to make it where you can add and, t you know, kind of buy whatever you need and then you can add on to it. So if you want to, you know, put panels on it where you can walk on the, on the deck, you can do that. Or if you don't have the need of um, getting up there, you just kind of want to mount a couple of solar panels and maybe an awning. Then you will only buy what you need and save a little bit of money on that. Yeah, it's. Um, I think vans uh, really reflect the owner's personality and how they want to use their van. Or maybe it's just some aesthetics like me. I'm just <laughs> trying to cowboy up things a little bit. Um, let's let's see. Um, so Ms. Chavez here said, "Do you have lithium options?" We talked about that a little bit. Um, um, but maybe how backed up are the start dates? So if you wanted to get a van into the queue, how does that work at Rover Vans? Sure. So we're booking the second quarter. We're booked until end of April, I believe, right now. Um, so we're still kind of, you know, if you reach out to us now and uh, we'll go through, you know, the, the process and we'll put you in line, you will have your van by summertime. That is a beautiful thing that every van owner or want to be wants to hear not this wait for you know 12 to 18 months which is kind of going um crazy um so can do wants to uh revisit on um scott what do you think of command strips instead of putty i actually use them both i use command strips to hang hooks i to find a good example of my i don't have it but everything on the wall behind me is is the putty um i use the command hooks for um command strips to hang a hook to hold things like my backpack and coats and things of that nature. Um, we actually in Velcro, really heavy duty Velcro. I think you need kind of all three uh, to, to, to use things. Um, what I found with a putty is if your van gets really hot and mine's gotten really hot and, 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 and that some of the stuff melts off the wall, it, it loses its adhesion and it falls. So you come into your van and you got all this stuff on the floor. It's kind of unsettling, but um, shouldn't be 120 in the side of the van very often. <laughs> Um, all right, we are a few minutes late. Uh, we're going to do libation live. Let me share that, um, and I'm going to uh, hang tight. I have a te technical difficulty here. 
I did an OS update. Um, let's see, window. So standby, folks. Here we go. Libation live. So that should be coming through. Um, so this is a, a beer from Colorado. And what we're looking at here is um, this is Voodoo Ranger. New Belgium is the company. And Voodoo Ranger is kind of the mm, name of, the, of, the, of their beer line. And then um, Juicy Haze IPA is what the beer is. So if you are enjoying an adult beverage tonight, um, I'm not sure maybe – Ryan and Peter were driving nuts by having a beer, but <laughs> it's just, um, and this is uh, being done in my Lukenbach, Texas glass. So can't get enough of Texas. And um, I, I've tried this. Um, it comes out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, they call it new Belgium because they went on a bike ride. The owners um, through Belgium and they um, discovered craft beer, IPA in particular. And so they came back to the USA. So I want to give everybody a cheers. Happy new year. Thanks for joining us. Got a few more good questions. Don't go away. I am not an IPA fan, but there is something really magical about this one. Um, <laughs> and who's not to, who, what's not to like about that can art, right? Mm. And unlike a lot of beer, like I don't know, Miller Lite, I think the craft beers are kind of enjoyed cold, but not, you know, 34 degrees. Um, this one's warmed up a little bit. So comment below if you've had a Voodoo Ranger by New Belgium out of uh, Fort Collins. And we got a couple of really great um, questions in here. Um, maybe everybody talks about toilets in vans. We just did a, a video on a storyteller, really rubbing it in a little bit. So maybe just, what is your approach to gray tanks, uh, Peter, in rubber vans? Can you take a black tank, convert to cassettes, and run them both into gray? Um, this, uh, uh, Scub, cut line. I'm not sure I say that. Um, what's a cassette toilet? I do not want a cassette toilet, and never want to see it again once I flush it. <laughs> so, um, but what's your what's your take on on uh, RV waste systems? I'm gonna let Ryan uh, cassette. He's our, he's our <laughs> house specialist. <laughs> um, yeah, so far, like I said, mentioned before, we haven't done a black tank yet in a van um, because primarily, uh, you know. It, we build based on what our clients want and we haven't really had a client uh, request a black tank yet. So, so we do um, like the Thetford 365 and the Thetford 165, I believe is the smaller one um, in the vans. And, and that's worked out really well so far. We do have some really cool compost toilets um, coming. Um, we actually pre-bought them last year, but they're still not, finished uh, production yet. Um, so we're going to have more options, you know, moving forward. That is so cool. Um, that's just, I, I love the word you're using, which is options. Um, Embassy RV, my, my partner, um, they have a number of options. They're into a Lavio dry flush that they really seem to like and the customers really seem to like. But I think having um, options is just a, a really great word. Um, uh, Mr. Moore's here saying, I don't see any showers in Rover vans. So what's your, what's your take on showers? That's funny. Actually, we, uh, the two vans that we're building now, they're both going to have showers. Um, the van behind us has a really cool shower. It's by Tetra vans. Um, hmm. It's actually a shower that will collapse and get out of the way, um, which I found uh, the van behind us is my van. And I found it's perfect because I don't live in a van. I use it, you know, typically on the weekends um, or on holidays and vacation. So I didn't want to shower. I, I didn't want to take the space for the shower, um, but that shower is perfect. I can um, basically set it up in less than two minutes, use it and then put it and hide it out of the way. That's so cool. Um, yeah. It's really, kind of, again, depends on how do you want to RV? Why do you want to RV? And uh, for a full timer like me, I just need those root real RV system. So totally get it if you're the weekend warrior. Um, so Don has got a, a question here, gentlemen. Uh, do you custom paint job your vans? Also, the van behind you is beautiful. It is stunning. What's your, what's your story? Um, um, and your van again has got a great color. Um, yeah. so I'm just kind of curious on their paint. So we haven't done any custom paint. Uh, we had the capability. We were partnering with a really good body shop um, that I've known the owner for 30 years. Uh, 
the color behind the event behind us is stock. Uh, we do design wraps, and if you want to add your own flavor to the van, um, we can sit down with you and listen to your ideas and, you know, put a really cool wrap on the van. And I got to tell you, you know, wrapping a van um, is probably some of the best money I've spent on my van. It's just, it gets such personality. Um, it's just the coolest thing. Um, Sparks has got a good question. Um, James is stating here that, um, he could not wait. So he opened his drink already. <laughs> so cheers. Uh, that's just so funny. Sorry to tease you guys with the, with the frosty one there. I said, we'll make you a hot toddy in Chicago. Um, so Sparks guy's got a good question here. Uh, could you please describe the discovery process of informing the design and build for a new client? So what does that kind of, you know, walk us through that? Sure. So, you know, different clients are, this process would happen a little bit differently. Um, we, we have clients that know exactly what they want. Uh, we recently built a van for someone that's on their fourth van. Um, they had a beautiful Turing prior to coming to us and he knew exactly what he wanted. So it was kind of, you know, process with him was a little bit different because he sat down, he made a drawing on a piece of paper, which we took and we, you know, we put it in the computer and then we built the van that he exactly wanted. Um, for a client that maybe hasn't done any van life and they're a little bit newer, we would meet with you first um, in person or over Zoom or whatever, and we would kind of find out what you're after and you know what the goal is. You know, if, if you're going to be traveling with two people, if you have guests often, and kind of what kind of traveling. You know, um, I think the vans are built differently for weekend warriors than for someone that's going to be doing van life, you know, full time. Um, so from there, we make recommendations and then we listen to the client and kind of going back and forth, we end up at the design that the client wants. And we really, we take a lot of time making sure that um, the client maybe, sometimes people want to design something that wouldn't be very practical or that just wouldn't work, you know, maybe wanting to put in a little bit too much into um, a small space and I've um, I've talked to clients that actually had a van built out and they had all these ideas and they cramped all these things to a van only to find out that they, they didn't like it. Um, so having the experience, you know, uh, of building a lot of vans already and, and having like Brian here that has been living in this van, that helps us design a van that a client will, will want. Um, and I think that's huge. Because even, even you know, when, when I built my first van, you know, now I'm going back like, gosh, I wish I did this different. I wish I did that different. So we hope to eliminate that I wish I would have done something different, you know. We want to kind of like nail the design for our clients on the first van. And I think that's really so important. And clearly got to listen to the customer, right? But sometimes giving just a little bit of pushback um, to really make somebody think through um, you know, what their decision process is. Maybe there's some way to iterate on that. So you give them very close to what they want without, you know, maybe there's some feasibility issues. Um, again, I go back to the storyteller video that um, we posted a couple weeks ago and uh, it was, it was kind of, you know, I was kind of poking the bear and um, I love the adventure vans, but it would never work for me because I need a real toilet and I need a real shower and I need a real table. Um, but most people, what it, it caused them to do, and this is kind of thing, to your point, Peter, is that it caused them to validate their thinking. Um, and that I'm, this is, I'm making a good decision. Um, and most of the storyteller owners that, that commented said that, um, while they appreciate the thought provoking, uh, they're very happy with their storyteller. Now, one couple did say, you know, we never really talked through the toilet situation and your test of doing a porta potty in the smallest room in the house, which would be probably their walk-in closet. Um, with the spouse present, um, got to really think about it. And they actually canceled their storyteller deposit and went out and bought a Travado uh, that they're pick up, like, pick, picking up in two weeks because we caused them to think about what decisions they were making or overlooking by not really thinking it through carefully. So I'm just, uh, you're in a little bit of an enviable position because you can deliver what the customer wants, but maybe just a little bit of pushback on some things that like are just you know not feasible um, in some ways. Kind of interesting. Uh, a couple more questions coming in. And um, that was Sparks, guys. So he's got a little bit of a, I think, a tongue-in-cheek um, 
Are you accepting Bitcoin? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> you prefer U.S. dollars, I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, and uh, Sherry's got an interesting comment here. Um, yes, to the marine world, uh, we know about these. So Sherry has a. Um, a traveler which embassy rv builds out and they take a lot of cues from the marine industry too i think you guys do as well yeah. um just because they are um so what so here's a question for you why is the marine industry are they so much farther ahead of the rv industry or why is why is that kind of where the innovation is coming from in some ways do you think hmm Good question. Um, well, a lot of most of the RV or marine products that we've been using, uh, they seem to be done with a little more quality, you know. And I think maybe with boats being more expensive, um, a lot of these parts are just more expensive. They're they're nicer. Um, I wish we had some pictures, but we just finished a vent for a client, and you know all the water inlets and and the valves and like all the little parts that I bought for that vent. He kind of gave me a free hand. He said, look, just buy the best of the best. And um, the quality on the stuff is just, and, and the way it looks is beautiful. Um, plus, you know, um, like the refrigerators we use, they're, they're used in boats, you know. Um, I think being a marine product is designed for, you know, for shaking and moving. And um, it, it, these products just seem higher quality for the most part. Um, I think there's a lot of, Fortunately, there's a lot of like really cheap products made for RVs. Um, whereas in the marine world, it seems like that is kind of filtered out a little bit better. Yeah, it's really pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, it just gets me thinking back to, to Embassy RV, some of their approaches um, to like uh, fresh water tanks. They use yacht um water bladders so he stacks a fresh two fresh water tanks um using a yacht a marine bladder system versus a stationary tank that only holds this it's, it's really innovative so I, I i'm totally with you and working with them and i work with you a little bit it's just you know, I, I think can, that nod is really interesting yeah please ryan if i can add one one thing too is is that I think that RVing in the U.S. specifically has uh, not really demanded um, sort of the high quality things that are required in in boating or in yachting, or it hasn't really demanded the quality because for you know years and years and years you get a Class B RV and you park it at a campground in a state park or in a national park or something like that. And then you, you're parked there for, you know, for a while. And like with these big motor coaches and stuff like that, that's, that's pretty much what, what you do. Um, whereas, you know, in a boat, right, like it's constantly, like Peter said, it's rocking, it's moving. And now with like the, the popularity of vans, um, just the, 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 the demand has changed, right? And, and the requirements for these things have changed. Um, and it's, it's interesting because we, we look a lot of, we look at a lot of um, like the European van builds and they're way ahead of the US as far as quality and technology and just overall design. Um, and you see a lot of parallels between like the European van builds, which have, kind of just been um, growing and building off of each other because, uh, you know, you, you have to have a smaller van in Europe just based on like size limitations and stuff like that. Um, and so you, you'll see a lot of parallels between the European van builds and yachts and boats. And so it's, it's, it's important to look at that, you know, aspect of it too. Yeah, totally agree with you on the Euro vans. It's just, uh, it's so incredible. Um, so here's my ask of the audience. This is a new element we're adding in tonight, um, which is to give us your biggest aha moment of the night. Um, comment below, please. Let me know was the biggest aha. That was amazing. Or that was cool. Never thought about that. Um, and we may start tallying these and putting them up on a, on a bulletin board. Um, but if you can share this, your biggest aha from the night, and of course, give a thumb up for, um, Ryan and Peter for joining us in 11 degree Chicago in their workshop, clearly not dressed for endless summer. Like I am <laughs> not, uh, envy you with my, my flip flop feet, which are, by the way are cold because the air conditioner is going. Um, oh. <laughs> so if I, I know, sorry to rub it in there, gentlemen. Um, 
But comment below and then comment um, on the on the playback. Uh, what was your biggest aha from this that you didn't uh, really expect and uh, a big learning from me? That would be super helpful to know. And last question of the night, since we're at the top, does this hour go fast or what? It just always amazes me. <laughs> um, Donna wants to know, um, and I do have an answer for this. Um, Scott, are you going to adopt a new van kitty? Um, the answer is yes. The question is when? And the even more specific is, answer is we're actually test driving a cat in our uh, third Airbnb property when we, um, um, as we as we remodel this this house. And we're test driving because I don't want to take a cat on the van without me test driving them, us, and, and the cat test driving us. So um, it's super cute, super affectionate. It's a little disc, discombobulated. It's Kyle's sister's cat that's kind of inside, outside cat. Uh, but so far, so good. It's absolutely adorable. Uh, when you come up with a name, um, it's black and white. Um, so watch Instagram because you might see some stuff on there, Donna. But yeah, um, before we leave full time again in about four or five weeks, um, up the East Coast this time, uh, Kat will be with me in the van. So um, really, really excited about that. Uh, there's something special about cats. Are you guys dog guys or cat guys or probably both guys? Um, I'm a dog guy. <laughs> I, have, I have both a dog and a cat. <laughs> Indecisive, so you got both. <laughs> That's cool. Exactly. <laughs> um, that is so great. Well, um, we have come to the end. So again, uh, give the team a thumb up here um, for just uh, surviving the uh, the winter weather there in Chicago in the workshop. And of course, we just want to um, thank Peter and Ryan uh, of Rover Vans for helping us out tonight. And I think we'll be doing some more stuff together. I'm just really excited the way you guys roll. And um, maybe you can organize a camp out or something when we get there uh, to Chicago and check hit him up on the what's the best way? Um, website, Peter? Website, Facebook, um, yeah. Instagram, Instagram. And then Ryan, uh, Ryan's fan. 24 7. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then Ryan, how do we find you? It's uh, it has two A's or something, right? Yeah, it's a Van Design Co. is my, uh, if you want to follow along with my Van Again Adventures, but Van with two A's. Van with two A's, Van Design Co. on Instagram. Pretty active, by the way. Um, so just uh, a big thank you to everybody for joining us tonight. Thank you, Ryan and Peter, uh, surviving the weather. And we will see you next Wednesday, episode 53. We're going to uh, do a little bit of celebration. Go to my website, gosmalllivelarge.com slash W-U-W, and get signed up for Camper uh, new camper of the, of the week and um, all the stuff we talked about and um, we're uh, going to take the show to the next level in the new year. So thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate you being out there. Ryan and uh, Peter sit tight and we'll see you next week.